Good afternoon, doctor. Oh, hi. Is this ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, doctor. Uh, thank you, nurse. You'll need this, doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Uh, could you take a look at the client in bed number three now? His name is Eric Sopmarsh. This one. Hmm. <laughs> look at my plaster. Is this plaster any use to you? No, it isn't. You seen this photo? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. Do you There's recognize this red nose? Oh dear. I don't think he'll be needing that again. Who? Monsieur Boissy, the comatose clown. Rag. Do you recognize this tissue? No, I don't. It looks like a chronic health risk to me. Well, I've been carrying it around for days and I'm okay. <laughs> Would you like head. to shake hands with me? Well... No, it's okay. Forget it. <laughs> right. right. Do you have clown. any clowns on the ward? Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Hardly. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last three months. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A silly stunt involving a unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. Do you have a patient okay. named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. Why is Marquet in quarantine? If you wish to know more, you'll have to speak to Herr Hagenmeier. All I know is that Marquet's room is strictly out of bounds. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. That's not my concern, monsieur. Right. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. You I need to talk to? Hello, anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. Crabs the mattress and just flips him out of bed. Come on, get out. <laughs> what can you tell me about Marquet? He's the man in the private room, isn't he? That room was mine before I was tossed out like a common squatter. Do you know what's wrong with Marquet? They won't even say what's wrong with me. Tell me, Doctor, what's your opinion? Uh, it's too early to say. But I've been here for three months. Yeah, that's not a long time. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. <laughs> the woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's simply not true. She's quite strict, but that's her job, isn't it? You've got to have discipline in a place like this. All right, let's check. I'm going to take your blood, blood pressure. pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. <clears throat> Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. I'll come uh, back later. Okay. I think I need to talk to her to, for it to explain how to use it, I think. Pardon me, nurse. Oui, monsieur. How do you use this thing? What is this device? It's for taking the patient's blood pressure, doctor. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. Okay, let's talk to... Can't talk to them, okay, so I need to talk to you. Um... Doctor! Yeah. What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Okay. 
Seems fine to me. You're not? Of course I am. No, you're not. Doctor. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. All right, let's leave. Let's talk to this duck. Hello. No. I want to talk to this man. I thought of this one. <coughs> Explain how this thing works. Excuse me, sir. Aha! Just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bunny, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Oh yeah, I remember now. He is yeah. fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. Right, you, follow me. And it's just appeared. God damn it. Oh, there you are. Just follow me. Doesn't he? Hey, right. Let's go over here. Talk to him. And he should take Hi, over. Hi, it's me again. Oh. I'll come back. Right, I need to talk to you. Hi, my name's George Stobart. <coughs> yes, sir? So, what's your name, kid? Benoit, they call me Bunny. Bunny? Jeez, and you don't mind? Oh, I've gotten used to it. Okay, Benoit, you're gonna help me. Anything you say, sir. Do you no, know you anything Mar about a patient named Marquet? Uh, no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty with a nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. Oh, you're young. Right. Here, take this. Take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, uh, keep it safe until I think of something. Follow me, Benoit. I'm right behind you, sir. Now, let me talk to you. Hi, it's me again. I'll come back later. Uh, see if I can get over here and if he asks. You haven't finished taking my blood pressure. Well, I haven't got the thing. He does. Bunny does. Will you keep quiet? You're disturbing the other... I'll keep quiet when you've taken my... I have to see... How come he gets preferential treatment? It's because he's got money, isn't it? I'll come back when you've dealt with that chip on your shoulder. Right. Bunny. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? Do you still have that gauge I gave you? Ah, yes. What do you want me to do with it? Use it on Use it man. on Eric Sotmarsh. Okay. Now. You leave me alone. Right then, so do you. I'm Dr. Stobart. Bonjour, Doctor. That's lazy. It's the same security guard as the one before. But it's a different voice. Lazy! Can you think of any sensible use for this plaster? Sensible? No. Pural? Yes. But you've probably thought of those already. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I have never seen him before. Look at this nose. Do you recognize this red nose? Don't get cute with me. That rag. What does this tissue suggest to you? It looks as if it has been used to wipe Satan's bottom. <laughs> I hate to say it, but you could be right. 
Go and boil your butter. Would you like to shake hands? What for? As a gesture of goodwill. On reflection? No. Look at this. What do you think this tool is used for? Branding mice without bending down. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? No. It sounds Middle Eastern. Are you Thomas Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No. Then you won't be needing this. Look at this gem. Do you recognize this gem? It isn't an emerald, is it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Right. Have you seen any suspicious characters on the ward? Yeah, I have. A gorilla bear. and a weasel? No, this was a tatty old bear. How is the bear acting suspiciously? Well, he was wearing a homburg. Is that against the law? No, but it's pretty weird for a bear. <laughs> have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, Doc, right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He has anthrax. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed as vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized well, to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, Doc. All right, let's go in. Marquet. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh, I thought you were one of the Ashashin. <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster quickly. Tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. What, you have it? That is. Not yet, but it's being taken care of. I hired a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them? Just a tad. For Klausner. Uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he <laughs> has a theory about the location of the... <laughs> That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Ah, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter. Oh, the no. door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. Marquet, no. Guy we don't even know. Oh, my kid's dead. Oh dear. Back at Nico's apartment. Hello, George. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? 
Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it yeah, Khan? I know, right? No, I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. I guess Pirates. I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mou? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. Let's go talk to Andre. 